I am convinced that in a man's life, you will not make more than 10 or 20 destiny defining decisions. Destiny defining decisions are not many. It is at such times when seasons are about to change, when certain decisions involve God. Oh, for instance, where do I relocate for the next 20 years with my children? That's not something to make over coffee. Destinies will suffer from it. Who do I marry? How many children do I have? About to take decisions that affect your establishment. Don't hurry decisions. No. It's worth it to, if you get a decision right, it can redeem 20 years. You miss out on a decision, it's like the hand of the clock. It will come back, but time will be lost. And destiny is measured as a unit of time. With First Samuel chapter 30, is God helping someone's prayer life? Let's read it together, please, if you can see. Are you ready? One, two, read, please. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. This is the kind of prayer to pray before you take major, sensitive, destiny-defining decisions. The prayer of inquiry. Do you know why this prayer is important? Because the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. Believers, listen to me. There is a way that seemeth right unto a preacher. There is a way that seemeth right unto a young graduate. There is a way that seemeth right unto a Nigerian. But the Bible says the end. You can see it looking very attractive. I hope you know Satan does not use evil alone to destroy. When he uses evil and you can detect it, he will use good. For instance, a visa on your passport. A visa on your passport does not necessarily mean God wants you to relocate. Now, there's nothing wrong with relocating. Are we together? But I'm saying that there are many times Satan will use good things to destroy you. Sometimes an employment letter can be the worst thing that would have happened to you. Hmm. What God intends to give you is not good against evil. It's life. Because both good and evil came from the same tree. So there are times that Satan will use a lot of good. If he sees that you are fighting bad friends, he will bring good friends who can destroy you. The most important thing is that you are destroyed. Are we together? When Satan came to Jesus, how many of you know that what he used for his temptation, the raw material for tempting Jesus was, it is written. He did not tell him, go and take a bottle of some alcohol that the Roman soldiers take. No, he came and said, it is written. He shall put his angels charge. I mean, if you hear someone quoting scripture that much, you want that person to be your friend. And yet the name of the person quoting it is Satan. So just because something carries the carriage of good, I pray that God is helping someone this morning. There are many good things that are destructive to your destiny. I tell you sincerely many good things you must sustain the power to reject both good and bad things the programming that makes you frown on all at only bad things you would have given yourself cheaply to satan weapons are fashioned and fashioning is a product of study what is this person what does this person want at this point oh you are so lonely you need a good friend and Satan will bring somebody who is sincere but not wise. That person becomes a reason for your destruction. Everything you tell that person, he or she will go and tell everybody because he brought somebody who has not worked with the, weak, the weakness of managing relationships. The person is not evil. The person is just not wise. Oh, we are still trusting God for a child. We say, really, okay, let's pray. And then the next thing you see another person sending you a text in the night that which you are looking for that i've heard about may god give you and you're saying where did this come from now <laughs> good things can destroy you many good things have destroyed destiny many 
many. Do you believe what you are hearing? Should I pursue? Should I overtake? You see, sometimes when all the variables are there, chances are excellent that you may develop pride and not need God again. The certificate is there. My uncle is now a senator, which is an advantage. Oh, my, my sister in America told me, you just submit this. There's an assurance that in one month, your passport will be stamped. At that point, it doesn't make sense to ask God, should I pursue? Because you suspect, what if he says no? In the presence of all these great opportunities. Do you know why many people don't ask God for answers? They suspect that he will reject it. And you are, you are mostly right. because the moment you start asking god that means you are saying i am willing to work with whatever you tell me the way we fight god is proof that we were not serious about asking him should i pursue you've already prepared the horse you've dressed the horse you've climbed on the chariot you are ready to go the horse has even started moving and say oh god should i pursue so that it will be on record that i ask you and god will say come back and he said i knew it i reject that spirit it can't be god the bible says the path of the job so you were not really serious about inquiring let me tell you how to hear from god be willing to accept any answer as a sign that you trust his will for your life if not your hearing will always be wrong i can tell you 90 percent of our prayer of inquiry we already have our answers what we are largely doing is hoping God agrees with you. That's the truth. How do I know that? The difficulty, the way we fight God back after he speaks. If you are fortunate and your answer, his answer is consistent with what you've always wanted. Then you now say, now I knew it. I knew it. God, should I start that business? I already have my 10 million. I'm not asking you for money. Just give me permission. And God says, go ahead. And you rejoice. Say, I, this is the kind of God I want to serve. But while you are praying and God says, that 10 million is not for you. Bring it to the king's court. You say, what did I say? No, God cannot do this kind of bad thing knowing how Nigeria is now. This is not God. This is a familiar spirit and I curse that spirit. God, if it's you, verify and your first dream becomes somebody that God uses. Maybe it's even me. I would say, obey God as he has said. You get up and say, I hate all these people. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> the prayer of inquiry is a very risky prayer adventure you must love god and trust him to delve into this one because it would disrupt many of your plans but one assurance i leave with you is the kind of glory that will come out of your life when god directs you when he led them when he led them moses said do not let us depart from here let me tell you this sometimes using our frame of mind and our frame of thinking our plans can be so beautiful based on how we've seen it but how many of you know that his thoughts are higher than your thoughts help me that his ways higher than your ways god god's thoughts will always be infinitely better and greater than what you ever imagined but you see one thing with god is that he does not strive with the spirit of man for long there are people today who have lost in business because god told them they pretended they did not hear him when the holy spirit comes to you comes to you and you keep resisting him he will honor you and leave you but for that consequence you can be sure you will go through it please ask God questions you don't need to ask God silly questions like um, should I wear a black shoe or a white shoe he says the answer is in your brain that one God has given you don't have to make a mockery of God like that but let me tell you I am convinced that in a man's life you will not make more than 10 or 20 destiny defining decisions destiny defining decisions are not many it is at such times when seasons are about to change when certain decisions involve god oh, for instance where do i relocate for the next 20 years with my children that's not something to make over coffee destinies will suffer from it 
am I wasting your time yes who do I marry how many children do I have Lord there are five men coming and honestly based on me oh, this second one this the kind of potential I'm seeing there is very convincing is that true you've not read of people who turn from grass from uh, what was grace to grass and others who went from grass to grace you would have looked at david if you saw david in the wilderness and you took david to your home maybe they would drive david away but that was a king you were driving away honestly let me tell you to be carnally minded truly is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace it is only god who knows the future of men's destinies and there are times you need to lock up yourself you have an opportunity for a great job an oil company and then god is calling you into ministry don't assume you can assume you are called into ministry and reject the oil company and find out you were not called into the fivefold ministry you think i'll say it the other way around there are times where you are not called the oil company was what you would have taken and you reject it just assuming that because you will suffer as if god did not call you and at a point you say what is wrong and god will say i called you generally but not to this assignment every wrong decision wasting your destiny some of you made careless destiny decisions and prayed may the god of mercy i'm praying again may the god of mercy help you may the god of mercy come through for you in the name of jesus christ when i began to sense in my heart that god would have me leave zaria to abuja i loved zaria so much i mean ministry was going exceptionally well god was doing something within that region that i had not seen since i came there it was it was a, it was a season of phenomenal ministerial strides how does god come in the midst of nothing and now says i struggled with god for three years and there are prayers where you say god confirm you have asked for trouble god will confirm it anyway you will use dreams a scripture visions enemies friends everything will confirm it god for you it's interesting to know how i finally camped in abuja it was during covid i just returned from london where the last set of people to leave and i thank god for that i would have been trapped in that place for three months i returned back to abuja preparing to go for a miracle service in zaria when they just announced the lockdown they say nobody is going anywhere i stayed in abuja and that was it you see that now but I used that opportunity alone. I started praying. And God said, finally, now that I have your attention, this is the new season, finally, we are stepping into. Okay, I started praying. By the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, the map of the globe. Keep praying on it. That is your assignment. I look at myself now and wonder, what if I resisted and say, you don't know what you are doing. You, don't, you are not in Zaria, oh God. I'm the one who knows what is happening he will leave you but you will see that you will keep seeing things in the spirit that you are rising and it will never manifest for some of you after this conference go for a retreat bring your major plans for this year and for the next 10 years don't assume take this as a prophetic instruction don't assume you are about to take decisions that affect your establishment don't hurry decisions no it's worth it to if you get a decision right it can redeem 20 years you miss out on a decision is like the hand of the clock it will come back but time will be lost and destiny is measured as a unit of time who is god speaking to please go for a retreat oh, after this conference thank god for the women go for a retreat lord i'm not going to make this major financial decision major marital decision major ministerial decision i cry unto you the god of all grace speak to me what is the next season of my life church is quiet i'm assuming that the word is entering your spirit praise the name of the lord
that's why you can see ordinary people who don't look like it but their decisions are always destiny defining you know why they have mastered the art of engaging this prayer god should i pursue should i overtake should i pursue you will see a building that does not make sense and the spirit of god tells you let's go to the place of prayer fast for two days by the second day god will tell you this building you see a company is coming to buy it in two months buy it now you will sell it for 10 times the price buy it now other people they leave all these carcass but because you had him you can just go with childlike faith and even make a deposit just to trap it down Two weeks later, people are calling you and saying, X, Y, Z, you say, I can't believe it. Is it a scam? They say, no, they need this building. Whatever price, name your price, add profit, add commit, add everything. We still want it. And someone will look at you and say, how, how is your life working like this? The power of hearing from God. This is the model that many of our fathers in the faith taught us. They would tell you, God said this. Look at where RCCG is, for instance. You know, every time I have the opportunity to pass that place, I imagine if God told me to go to that place, I will most likely disobey. Honestly, I'm being sincere with you on that God. I will most likely, I'll ask him for forgiveness later on, but most likely I would have disobeyed. When you see the end point of prophecy, it looks glorious, but you rewind in your mind and see that bush. That's when you see the power of hearing God. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. Behind the giant strides that trail believers is obedience to something they are sure God said. Can I tell you this? If you take a step knowing and or believing it was God that led you and God sees the sincerity of your heart even if you are in error he would defend you for his namesake this is one thing I know about God that means if I walk through this LED believing that it was a door and believing that it was God that told me to walk there God will carry a door and put there for my sake to make sure that it is not that I trust in him is a risk Look at what he told Peter. If it be thou, bid me come. Peter verified. This is an example of such prayer. Peter said, tell me if you are the one. And he said, come. Peter took the step of faith. But because he was sinking, God took responsibility. It was at my word and he held him. Don't be afraid of obeying God. There is a system to defend his name in your life. Sometimes when you become too calculative and scientific. Okay, God, you've told me this, but let's consider, we'll review this again in 2027. It won't work that way. There are times you have to trust God and walk on water. This is a word for someone. You have to trust God and walk on water. Being unnecessarily scientific will not get you forward. He said, register the company. Don't ask questions. Go and register the company. Where will I get the contract? Leave that to God. You take a step of faith. He says, go for a three-day retreat. Don't say, God, what for? It's disobedience. You just go there first. After the first day, you are prayed, you are hungry, you don't even know what you are doing in that room. You just stay there. The answer is coming. Hmm. Wow, what an eye-opening um, sermon by God's servant, Apostle Joshua Selman. Welcome to the commentary section. My name is Kola Dave Goldman and I bring you captivating commentaries <laughs> on sermons preached by God's servant, Apostle Joshua Selman. And I'm so blessed by this one. We have started this series in a while now. This series on prayer, the methods of prayer. And I believe you have been blessed by it. It's just remaining one aspect of prayer that he has not talked about. And I've been so blessed by this to be honest this has been eye-opening especially this one on um, inquiry from god right um i noticed something about believers we tend to um have <clears throat> stronghold on alternatives like we hold on to alternatives even before we even think and that's that's something that um it shows that we have not really let go of our our self-leadership right if jesus is lord and is our god why is it that we believers we keep holding on to our own decisions before we even you know ask the father 
and he's not saying that we should ask god for oh what food will i eat this morning even there's, there are instances where god can tell you wear this cloth for an interview do not wear this one yes god does that gives such instructions but necessarily there are some things god has given us our brains to do and there are some other things that you will look so foolish when god asks you to do them and it's in that foolishness i thank thank god for what he said you know i learned so much from that that i should not be afraid of obeying god and that's something i'm taking home from this sermon because sometimes i'm afraid that okay what if i do this thing and i get laughed at what if i end up in shame obeying god what if i end up in shame do you know it's very very (laughs) it's very very easy to think that that's what is going to happen there are some of you that every other person has told you maybe somebody in a journey for instance for to um you know waiting on god for the fruit of the womb whom god has specifically told that you're not going to give birth through any other means medical interventions you should wait on me i'll give you child children imagine that kind of instruction in this day and age where every scientific method every uh, uh um you know anything everything in the society is pointing to the fact that you can actually do something for yourself instead of just waiting around you know you have gone to do your test and your checkup and you find out that you are medically okay and there's nothing wrong with you you know you are not sick but you know you can do some procedures medically to help yourself and god specifically told you when you went to pray about it that no don't do ivf or don't do iui or don't you know or don't do surrogacy or whatever method it is this is just an example and you are asking yourself god what if i end up in shame what if time passes what if i'm mocked what if i'm laughed at lord look at my age lord ah." see it is not easy i specifically know that it's not easy to follow and obey god but honestly i think it is the most rewarding thing to do I've seen other people's life and even in the little areas I've obeyed God I've seen I've seen the way it turned out to be for good right I may not have all the answers but so many people have gone ahead of us and they are telling us this and through the word of God we already know that obeying God is 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 better than sacrifice is better than our own wisdom his ways are not our ways so Recently, I was blessed by this, and you know, there's that that word I shared. Now, if you're the one, if you're someone like that, you know, just hold on to God. You will see how God will come through for you. And some people will go ahead to do their own, and they will fail. And God, and God will even force them back into His will. There are some people like that. So I, I believe that this message was was clear, loud enough, and it really blessed you. You know, because God's ways are not our ways. So please let us. You know, ask for grace and for mercy in case we have done our own way because definitely <laughs> we must have chosen decisions that were not good because we just wanted to satisfy our 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 con- our brain and our common sense. You know, may God forgive us and have mercy on us and redirect us in the right path in the name of Jesus. May we may we make decisions that will bring glory to His name that are in accordance to His will. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much for listening to this commentary section. I believe you were blessed by it. Do well to like this video, share to somebody so that it can bless their lives, and then click on that subscribe button, turn on the bell notification so that you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. So I'll see you when we post another video. Please let us know in the comment section what you learned from the video. Bye and God bless you.